used to appoint market police. And the market police will be moving around in the market. And if anyone was caught with money which was not the correct weight or purity, right there in the market you would be tried, right there in the market you would be sentenced, right there in the market you would be punished. The State University of New York in a place called Binghamton is famous for scholars who have distinguished themselves in the study of the free and the fair market. And they have come to the conclusion that the last free and fair market that the world ever experienced was the market of the Ottoman Islamic Empire. When the strange and mysterious alliance took place between European Jews and European Christians, that strange and mysterious alliance created modern Western civilization, the modern West. And the modern West then proceeded to attack money, to corrupt money, to destroy real money, and to substitute it and replace it with artificial money, bogus, fraudulent money that was totally and utterly haram. If only we could get the muftis of Islam to understand that. They listen to me, but it goes through one ear and it goes out through the other. They've been listening to me for years now, and they're saying, no, Imran is wrong. Imran is wrong. What they did was to, to remove gold and silver from the market and to eventually impose upon mankind a law prohibiting the use of gold as money. You probably, you probably, some of you hearing this for the first time, that it is now prohibited by international law to use a gold dinar as money. But Allah and his messenger have ordained as money. They began the process of corrupting money with the creation of the Bank of England at the end of the 17th century. We cannot today give you the history. It's a very interesting history of the stages through, when, through which they went through, but Dajjal works carefully inch by inch. And he does not want your eyes to open to understand what he is doing. So he eventually gave you television that will put you to sleep. The process commenced with the creation of the banking of England. And England issuing paper currencies. The paper currency was supposed to be redeemable in gold. Redeemable meaning you could take your paper to the bank and the bank will give you the gold, redeemable. But you are setting up people to rip them off because you issue more paper than you have gold. And when they realize that and they rush to get back their gold, all fall down. Hmm? And so they are ripped off. And this happened within a few years of the creation of the Bank of England. The process continued after the British ruling state 
began to transfer power or the transference of power was taking place to the second ruling state, the United States. The US dollar is redeemable in gold at 20 US dollars for one ounce of gold. But somewhere around, must have been 1926 or 27, if I'm wrong, correct me, the Federal Reserve was created. Somewhere around there, the Federal Reserve, a private bank, which seeks to impersonate a national bank, a state bank, private bank. And then suddenly the US government does something strange at the behest of the Federal Reserve. In April of 1931, most Americans don't know this. In April of 1931, the US government declared the use of gold, the, to keep gold coins and gold bullion to be illegal. In other words, they demonetized gold. Gold is no longer legal tender. And if you are caught with gold after a certain date, if you do not hand it over to the government, meaning to the Federal Reserve, who will give you $20 to each gold coin that you give them, one ounce of gold, if you are caught with gold after a certain time, gold coins or gold bullion or gold certificates, you go to jail for six months and pay 10,000 US dollars in fine. That's a lot of money in those days. And so all the Americans rushed to give their gold to Uncle Sam and to take the paper, the paper, at $20 an ounce. And then, of course, the sensible ones, the ones who knew the scam that was coming along, they didn't give Uncle Sam their gold. No. They changed all the paper that they had for gold. <laughs> and then they shipped the gold to Switzerland, outside of Uncle Sam's reach. Because they knew what's going to come in. And this is why today, you see all around the United States, people wanted to buy gold. Buy gold. Because they know what's coming. In January of 1934, the U.S. government, at the behest of the Federal Reserve, now re-monetizes gold. It cancels the legislation. You can now come back and buy back your gold from Uncle Sam. But Uncle Sam changed the value of his paper. His paper was $20 to one ounce of gold. And Uncle Sam decided from this day it will now be 35. 35. I'm telling you this story so you could understand what Allah is saying in the Quran when he said, وَلَا تَبْخَسُ النَّاسَ أَشْيَاءَهُمْ And he said it, three times in the Quran. So we rushed to buy back our gold from Uncle Sam. And we paid him $35 an ounce. After the American people had bought back their gold, Uncle Sam was left with 41% of the wealth of the country in his pocket. by the simple expedient of devaluing the money, by the simple expedient of devaluing the paper, the American government ripped off the American people to the tune of 41% of their wealth. 